I love making liqueurs because you get all this incredible concentration of flavor and they're incredible to have because they have so much flavor in just these small sips. So they become these fun things that you can have, you know, after dinner or before dinner, or if you just want a quick nip of something. And what's great is how much flavor you can pack into these little things. You don't have to ever worry about mixing them. So you get to really make these kind of the way that you want. You can kind of learn certain recipes and put your kind of spin on them. So I want to show you today a uh, liqueur that I love called Vent de Pamplemousse and it's exactly what it sounds. So in French, Vent is wine and Pamplemousse is grapefruit. So it's a grapefruit liqueur and it's real simple. It's just a uh, high proof spirit, mostly wine in that with grapefruit, vanilla, chamomile, sugar, and that's pretty much it. And it's something that takes about 40 days to make. So what's really great is if you can really layer this and really take your time and make it beautiful, it's a really beautiful thing to have around the house that's kind of sitting there while you're waiting for it to be finished. So um, let's get started on this. Let's, um, what we're going to do is we're going to layer this and each layer is going to have grapefruit, sugar, chamomile, and vanilla. You can use fresh chamomile. I'm very, very lucky that I found uh, fresh chamomile at the market. This is a German chamomile. It's a lot more, there's basically two main varietals of chamomile. One is German, one is Roman. The German is a lot more uh, sweet, which is what I like about it. But also you've got the dried chamomile here. So I've got a couple things. These buds will actually be dried. You can actually buy them online or buy them in stores. Um, or if you really are kind of just can't find anything, you can actually just get tea bags that have organic chamomile. The only issue with that is it's, it's graded up. It's mashed up a little bit more, but you can actually open up these packets here and you can literally cut these tea bags open and now you've got that. So we're going to layer that, but I'm going to use the fresh chamomile. You can use different citruses if you want. I'm just showing you a little bit of the classic version. I'm going to add a little bit of my spin on to it, but let's first take the jar and like I said this is a large jar. I love using large jar jars because I know that the proportion is pretty much going to be one bottle and I'm going to use tequila as well. So there are, um, you can use a vodka, that's what it really calls for, but I'm going to use a tequila and I'm going to use three bottles of white wine. So the proportion is one part of tequila or vodka and then the other with two, three parts of wine. And we're going to layer this, right? So we'll put in these grapefruit slices that I've already cut. These are ruby reds. You can use, sometimes I've used three different kinds of grapefruit. I've used pomelos, I've used oro blanco. And what we'll do is I usually do, I usually take, let's see here, we've got, do one more layer. And the, in, the ruby red grapefruit, as I'm cutting it, it's a pretty much about a quarter of an inch thick there. So we'll put the first layer down there. And then you're going to take a vanilla bean. I like to use a lot of vanilla and you can literally just split it right down the middle. So I'll take a vanilla bean. Uh, it's great if you can get these and use them right away so they don't dry out. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it drying. It's just it's easier to cut when they're not dry. And then what I'll do is I'll butterfly those open a little bit so that the bean paste is exposed. And then usually what I'll do is I'll do, I'll probably do one bean like that, but I'll, I'll probably do another bean. I like having the vanilla in it. So we'll probably, we'll take this here, split it open and do one more bean. And it calls for two cups of sugar. So what I'd like to do is probably gonna make about four layers of this. And I'll put about a half a cup of sugar in each layer. And then I'll take the chamomile, crumple that on top. Again, like I said, the fresh chamomile is so great, but there's a lot of flavor in the dry chamomile, especially the buds as well. So we'll layer that there. And then we'll put about a half a cup of sugar. And that's the first layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep rising it up. Now the fun thing about this as well is you can add different citruses. So I'm going to put a little bit of a Meyer lemon in there. 
You can use Meyer lemons, you can use oranges, you can use grapefruits. It's always best if you can to use the grapefruit as the main kind of uh, component for it. But let's cut up some Meyer lemons to go on top there. So we can layer that. So listen, we're making this the traditional way and sometimes for me, I like to kind of master what the recipe is or what it really calls for, really understand it, really learn it. Also, it makes me understand like, how does it taste in its original form? What do I like about it? What do I don't like about it? And then you, that's when you get creative with it. When you do it the second time, you can start putting Meyer lemons in it or oranges or just different things that you like. Obviously, I've done this several times, so I'm gonna do a little bit of an experimentation, but it really is best if you can just keep it to the grapefruit just so you can understand what that flavor is. I'm actually gonna put even a little, what's cool is I can put a little bit of splash of fresh blood orange juice in here in between each layer. So that's gonna add a beautiful color, right? So right now I've got the Meyer lemons, I've got the chamomile, the sugar, the uh, vanilla. Oh, and I can even just smelling it right now, it's just I'm a big citrus person, so this is a perfect liqueur for me. So let's keep going, we'll get this to the top and then we'll put the alcohol in as well. Now we're gonna add the alcohol in. And it's really important too, if you can, is to put a little bit of each alcohol on top. So you don't wanna just put the whole wine and the whole tequila but put a little bit of wine, put a little bit of tequila, a little bit of wine, a little bit of tequila. So I'm gonna take the Sauvignon Blanc first and I'll pour in a bunch of that. And then I'll pour in some tequila. So listen, I'm actually using a Sauvignon Blanc and a Chardonnay today, so you can mix the, the white wines as well. Uh, I, again, I love Sauvignon Blanc because it has a, you know those great citrus notes in. So again, if you don't have tequila, you can use vodka. So I'm just gonna keep putting this in. Again, the majority of this is a wine base. So this is a big bottle. This is at a 1.5 milliliter, so that means that that's two regular size of wine bottles. And what's gonna happen too is this is gonna sit for about 40 days. And what you're gonna do is do your best to kind of agitate it. Sometimes I'll put in the back of a, um, a, a, long, a big spoon and try to stir it around a little bit. But this should fit about four bottles of alcohol. So again, the proportions is one part of al uh, straight alcohol, like a tequila or vodka, to three bottles or three parts of wine. Perfect. I'll add the rest of this little sugar in. And I love wine. For me, white wine is, is fantastic. You almost think it's not going to happen, but it is. There you go. Okay, so we've got that, and again, you could press down on it if you need to. And what I'm liking about this is I wanna get everything submerged as best as I can, if I can get it under the liquid. And I'm just gonna put a jar on it. It just has to stay in a cool, dry place. It's really, really simple. And again, we've got, now we've got the blood orange. And you can see a lot of that blood orange has gone to the bottom, right? So um, let's put a little bit more on top now that we have the liquid here. I think that would be cool. There we go. Look how beautiful that is. Just let that settle. We're going to cover it. We're going to let this sit for 40 days. I know that sounds like a long time, but it's going to go by pretty quickly. And what I love to do is, I mean, just look how beautiful this is. And the, rich, the colors are gonna get richer and darker, so I actually love to leave it, leave it out on my counter or just some place that people are gonna see it, or I get to see it every day and see how it changes, and it's just a beautiful fixture that I can have out, and you know, once this is done and you're straining it, you're gonna get a sense from how sweet it is what you think you're gonna wanna do with it. I mean, I think it's great on its own afterwards, after dinner, you could serve it as a mousse bouche before dinner, it could be a palate cleanser in between, it's up to you to kind of think about, oh yeah, I want to pair it with this, or I want to pair it with that. So again, try to make it as close to how the original recipe is, which is using just a grapefruit, and see how you like it on its own, and then you can experiment. So good luck with it, enjoy, and just have fun with it.
Mm. I mean, it's amazing how strong the flavor is and it hasn't even been sitting yet.